internet. I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game. So today on the channel we're starting our series of videos looking at Ticket to Ride. Now this first three videos are going to be on Ticket to Ride Europe and the first one will be the how to play video as normal followed by a example playthrough of the game and then finally my thoughts and review of the game. So what is Ticket to Ride? Well let's take a look at the cover here. We have what looks to be a rather 1900s European scene uh, with the mountains and forests in the background and a train. So not surprising this game is about building train lines in Europe in the 1900s. So it's a kind of set collection, you're building up hand cards to then purchase your lines and play the game. So, how do you actually go about doing that? Well, let's take a look at the table and see. Welcome to the table for our How to Play Ticket to Ride Europe. So first things first, let's go through how to set the game up. So first step is lay out the board. It is a single sided board, on the other side it's just black. So once you've got the board out, you then need to get your player pieces. So for our two player game, I'll be using red and blue. So we want to get the cylinders that are used as points markers out. And we will then place those on the 100 points to represent zero. The next step is that each player needs to collect their corresponding trains of their colour. So here we have the blue trains. Now you will also need to count and make sure that you have 45 trains. As well as your trains, each player will also need their free stations. So once you've got your pieces out, you'll just have those sat in front of you. Please be aware that also in the bag, they do provide spare trains. So next, you need to get your train deck and shuffle that up. So on the back, you can see the blue picture of the train. And on the front, there'll be various colours of trains. The colours of the trains will represent the colours of the various routes. And then deal four cards to each player. So for a total of eight cards in a two player game. Once we've dealt those out, obviously those will go to the players. And they can then look at those cards. We'll then also turn over five cards, which will be our market of cards that we can take from. So next, you need to find your ticket cards, which are these ones with the brown backs. There are two different types. There are the blue long routes and the brown bordered normal routes. So first, separate out all of the blues, shuffle them up, and deal one to each player. The rest, go back in the box without looking at them so you don't know what has gone back in the box. Then shuffle up your normal tickets and deal To each player. The remainder of the tickets you want to sit next to the game board in easy reach of all the players. Once the players have been dealt their tickets they can then look through the four tickets they have in front of them. So each player will then look at the tickets they have been given and decide which ones they want to keep and which ones to put back in the box. But you must keep a minimum of two tickets and if we look at what's being dealt here you can 
see we've got four tickets for one of the players. So obviously the normal routes are less points but are shorter, easier to get routes. So when picking which tickets to keep and which to get rid of, um, you want to bear in mind how likely you are to complete those routes. So for example, here we have Roma to Smyrna. So Roma is over here somewhere, is here. And Smyrna is here. So obviously the quick route is along this line here. But then our long route is Edinburgh to Athena. Now obviously Athena is very close to Smyrna and Edinburgh is all the way up here but you could quite easily go through Roma so keeping those two would work well. Also the Zurich to Brindisi we have Zurich here and Brindisi here so again we're going to want to go through Brindisi to get to Athena and Smyrna and we can have our route from Edinburgh go through Zurich and go this way down to Roma. So again that one makes sense to keep. However we then also have London to Berlin. So we have London up here, okay that's on our other routes, that makes sense. However Berlin is all the way up here and out the way compared to all the others that are going along this line here. So what we'll do is we'll throw that away back to the box. You need to be sure that players don't see what routes you get rid of and which ones you keep. So that is the setup complete. We can now get on with how to actually play the game. And as always I will start off by going through what it is you're trying to achieve with the game. So in Ticket to Ride Europe you are trying to get the most points and your points are tracked on the edge of the board which goes up to 100 obviously if you go past 100 you just have to remember that you have gone past the way in which you will get points is by building these routes so to build the routes you'll collect the cards and you'll collect sets of cards so if we look here we have a set of two green cards. That means we can build a route that is two trains long on a green route. So with those cards we would have three options. We have uh, oh, DP, I'm really sorry about butchering all uh, the rest of Europe, I'm terrible with geography, uh, to Brussels. Um, so we could build that route and we would put two our coloured trains on it and that would get us number of points as indicated on the board here and there is also a reference card provided that gives the same information as is on the board so you can see two, a route of two will give you two points additionally we could also have built Frankfurt to Essen with those two cards or Kharkov to Rostov And of course, whenever we play cards, they'll go to a discard pile that will just be to the side of the train deck. If we ever run out of cards in the train deck, we'll just shuffle the discard pile to become the new deck. So as well as building your routes, you can also get points by, at the end of the game, having the longest continuous route. So this is where your trains follow a line from place to place with the most number of trains and if you do this you'll get an extra 10 points at the end of the game. Additionally you gain points by completing your tickets. However it's important to also note that if you fail to complete any tickets you get minus points. The number of points you get for each ticket is shown in the bottom right hand corner 
and that is also the number of points you'll lose if you fail to complete that, that ticket. So to complete that ticket, all you have to be able to do is draw a line with your train, say from Roma to Smyrna. So I'd have had to have completed the routes between those. It does not have to be a direct route. I could go from Roma to Smyrna, for example, by going all the way up here and then back down. That is still perfectly allowed, but always keep in mind you have a fixed number of trains. So the first thing you'll want to do is to determine your first player. Now, the rules state that the player who visited the most European countries in their lifetime uh, will begin the game. However, of course, as always, you can just randomly determine a first player, which is my preferred method. Once you've determined your first player, they will take the first turn in the game, and then after that, the player will proceed in clockwise order around the table. In a turn, you'll have four choices of actions. You can only perform one of the actions, but you can choose which of the four you will perform. So the first action you can do, and probably the one you're most likely to do on your first turn, is to draw train cards. So the way this works is you can draw cards from your face-up pool. So I could say go, I want a blue card, and that would then immediately be replaced. Alternatively, you can choose to take cards blindly off the top of the deck. And when you draw cards, you can draw two cards. So I could say draw two blind off the top of the deck as so, try to pick these up, or I could draw two from here, replacing as I draw. The exception is when there are the locomotives. Now these locomotives have all the different colours stated on them. And the reason for this is they are a wild card. You can use them in place of any other colour card. Additionally, on some of the routes, there is this locomotive symbol. And you must provide that many locomotives in place of the normal colour card in order to complete that route. These are known as ferries. Also, when drawing cards, if when you refill the market as such, if you ever have free locomotive cards, you immediately discard all cards in the market and then draw five new cards. And then you continue with your drawing. So I could draw like so. So when drawing cards, if you want to draw one of these locomotives that is a wild card, if you are drawing a face-up locomotive, that counts as your two cards. So if I was to choose that locomotive, it would then get replaced, but I would not be able to pick another card. However, if you are drawing off the top of the deck blind, I could draw that locomotive, and I could still draw a second card blind off the deck. So as you draw cards, they'll simply go into your hand and you'll have more options for being able to claim routes. So that's then the next thing we're going to go through. Um, however, firstly, it is important to be aware there is no hand size. So you can have as many cards as you want. However, be warned that if you spend too long just drawing cards without claiming routes, that other people may claim the routes that you need to claim in order to complete your tickets. Okay, so the, then, as I've already said, uh, one of the other actions is to claim routes. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I'm talking about is if you have a hand of cards, so let's say I had this hand of cards here, I could choose to play cards from my hand into the discard pile next to the deck in order to claim claim routes of the corresponding number of carriages and colour. 
So in this case, let's use a wild and two green, and I could claim a route from Berlin to Wine. And to claim that route, I would simply take three of my trains, placing them on there, and I would then score the points for that route. So in this case, we have a route of three trains, which would get me four points. So the longer the route, the more points you will get for that. And these would then go to my discards. Additional things when claiming routes are that there are some different types of routes. As I mentioned, there are these ferry routes that have the locomotive symbol. So that means you have to use a locomotive card for that carriage. Additionally, there are grey routes, and all of the ferry routes that feature this locomotive symbol are grey routes, but there are non-ferry grey routes as well. Now, a grey route, you can use any colour of card, but they must all be the same. So, for example, I could do this ferry route here from Palermo to Brindisi, which is three carriages, one of which must be a locomotive, by playing these cards here, because I have two of the same colour and a locomotive, so they count as all the same colour. However, I could not go, oh, well, it's grey, I can use any colour, and use one green and one blue card. That would not be allowed. Additionally, the other route type of route that you have, in addition to these normal ones, the grey ones and the ferries, is you have tunnels. And you can tell the tunnels because they have this black border around them. Now the tunnels can be grey routes but they can also be specific colours. There is a lot of tunnels for example in this section here which is where the Alps would be I believe. But don't quote me on that because my geography is terrible as I said. Um, so with these tunnel routes, you would play the cards that you need to play for the route. So say I was doing Zurich to Venezia, I would play my two green cards for that route, but I would not yet claim it. First, we would turn over three cards from the top of the deck, and for each card that is either the same colour as the route that I am playing, so in this case I'm doing a green route, so any cards that were green, I would need to pay, play from my hand an additional green card or locomotive card in order to be able to complete that route. So it adds an uncertainty on those routes as to whether or not you'll be able to complete them because you don't know what the deck will come up with. As well as green cards, of course, the locomotives count as every colour. Therefore, if a locomotive comes up in the three cards that you turn over, you would still need to play an additional card. So in this case, I could play the locomotive from my hand to be able to complete Zurich to Venezia, and that would give me two points. If, however, I didn't have that locomotive card in my hand, and I had no green cards in my hand, so I could play no additional cards to pay the cost of the tunnel, I would then not be able to complete this route. What would then happen is I would take the cards back into my hand, so I wouldn't lose those cards, but I would then end my turn and play would proceed to the next player, so I'd achieved nothing with that turn. That's the only downside. The cards that you draw for tunnels um, then will just go to the discards and you continue on. So that is how you then claim a route. The next option of action you have in your turn is to draw tickets. So this is additional tickets to what you already started with at the beginning of the game. When you draw tickets, you'll draw three tickets, being sure that no other player sees them. And then you have to choose at least one of these tickets to keep. You can choose all three. So in this case, I would likely keep the Edinburgh to Paris. As I'd already said, 
I was looking at going Edinburgh through Roma, down Athena to Smyrna. So this Edinburgh to Paris is on that route. So I would keep it. If later in the game I drew tickets, I may have already completed some of these routes. If I had, I could keep the ticket knowing it was all already going to score. Any that you discard would just go to the bottom of the deck. But keep in mind, you must keep one. And of course, if you then fail to complete it, it is negative points for you. The final action that you can do is to build a train station. So why would you want to build a train station? Well, say, for example, me wanting to do this Roma to Smyrna, and nasty little red player here had blocked me off by building two trains there, and I didn't have enough trains to go round. But I already had the trains for the rest of the route, like so, and all I needed was if I could build on these two here. Now, obviously I can't build on those, but what I can do is build a station. So to build a station, I would place it there, and that would then mean I could use one route from that city of another player's colour for the purpose of completing tickets only. So I would not score any points, for having played that as if I'd played those trains, nor would it help count towards the longest route. So to play that, I would though, for my first station, and you do have three stations, need to play a single train card to the discards. That can be of any colour. For my second station, so let's say trying to do this route, Red had also built there, then a nasty bugger. I would need an additional station built here so that I could complete that route. In order to build that second station, I would need to pay two cards. And those two cards would have to be of the same colour. And then for your third station, it would be three cards all of the same colour. One reason you would not want to use your trains is because at the end of the game, for each train you have not used, you will gain four points. So if you do use your trains, not only are you missing out on gaining points on the turn that you're playing that train, you are also then losing 12, well, four points per train, so if you used all three, 12 points. So that is all the actions you can take on your turn. The final thing to cover is where there are double routes. So, for instance, Madrid to Pal Pamplona, or however you pronounce it, I'm really, really sorry, people. Uh, um, Pamplona to Paris, for example. Um, you have two routes there of two different colours. So in a four or five player game, that you can build on both of those, but of course the same player can't build on them. So, for instance, if you had a red player and a blue player, the blue player could build the four blue and the red player the four green. However, in a two or three player game, you can only build on one of those routes. So once the first player has put their trains down, the other one, it's as if it doesn't exist. But for that first player building on that route, they do have that choice of colour still. Obviously, the reason for that is to try and create a smaller board in a way and cause more blockages for when you have fewer people. So, that is how you play Ticket to Ride Europe. Thanks for watching to so Can Play That Game. If you have enjoyed this video, please do check out the remaining videos in this series of videos and there are links for those in the description of this video and also please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel and subscribe. And of course, as always, bye for now.